introduce me as my, I'm going to try to pronounce all my words right, but I'm getting over a cold, so. <laughs> You'll be fine. Yes. So, to the NAACP, thank you for inviting me to speak at such an important event, and thank you all for having me. Hello, my name is Khalil Williams. I stand before all of you as a product of the teachings in my own company called Millionaire Mind Kids. I am a paid keynote speaker, an honor and date student at City Bull Academy, a shop graduate, a grand prize winner at my school science fair, and an ordinary kid who just loves to play. All right. <laughs> Today I was asked to speak on President Obama's accomplishments. The tricky part is I have only been given 10 minutes to do so. Therefore, I will focus on only a few accomplishments that have hit the hardest for me as a student and a person who has been raised to have a lot of respect for the rights of women and our parents. The topics I will focus on are civil rights, education, job creation, and health care. I will be presenting the facts, not the opinions. <coughs> Dr. Elizabeth Dowdy always reminds me that everyone is entitled to their own opinions, but not their own facts. But first, I would like to share with you all what inspired me to research the facts. During the election on November 2nd, 2010, we were having a class discussion in my sixth period social studies class. The, que the topic for the day was the election and our president. The question was asked, what has President Obama done for the United States since he was elected? My social studies teacher gave us a team that President Obama hasn't done very much to improve our country since he was elected. This was his opinion, not the facts. Most of the students agreed. This inspired a dinner table discussion with me and my family. If you know my grandmother, then you know that she would see this as a challenge for me to research the question and present the facts. President Obama is our nation's president and should be treated with disrespect. <coughs> so, President Obama, what have you done for us lately? <laughs> the, the first accomplishment that I would like to talk about is on civil rights. Did you know the first piece of legislation that our president signed was the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act? The purpose of this new law was to end pay discrimination among women and minorities in the workplace. Before this law, employers were allowed to pay less money to people of color and women for performing the same jobs as white males who were paid more. For every dollar, oh, sorry. This discrimination impacted the wealth of all people of color, especially African American women. 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 <laughs> While interviewing my grandmother, she shared a personal experience with me that I will use as an example. While working in corporate America, being African American and a woman, she did not receive equal pay for performing the same jobs as her white male colleagues. For every dollar her white male colleague was paid, she was paid 78 cents, losing 22 cents per dollar. This is the same as having to pay 22% taxes or 22% interest. In any case, if she if her white male colleague was paid $100,000 a year, she was paid $78,000 per year, losing $22,000 per year in salary. If she worked the same job for 30 years or until she retired, she could lose nearly $660,000. You can look at this in two ways. Her employer stole $660,000 away from her, or she had to pay $660,000 just to work. Additionally, she had to be more qualified than, and work harder than her white male colleagues. She had to earn a master's degree to compete with high school graduates and undergraduate colleagues for performing the same job. As students, you may ask, why is this important? This, because now our, our mothers, brothers, future sons, and future daughters are finally protected by this law. We all must be paid equal pay for performing the same jobs. And that's the law. Thank you, President Obama. <laughs> the next accomplishment that I would like to talk about is on education. Did you know that President Obama signed a bill to improve the student loan program for us students? 
This is very important for us students who plan to go to a four-year university, a community college, or a trade college. As you may know, education is very expensive unless we all win full scholarships. Most students who attend college finance their education through student loans or Pell Grants. The primary difference between the two are student loans are paid back and Pell Grants are not paid back. This bill makes more money, more money affordable for us students. This bill will remove managing student loans from the banks. This new bill will save us students nearly six, $68 billion in bank fees over 11 years. This bill will also make it affordable for more students to attend college. Another important contribution President Obama has made to our education is that is he has launched an Educate to Innovate campaign to improve the participation and performance of, Af of American students in STEM. My sister Naja will talk more about this subject. And you can also read the report, Tapping America's Potential, the <coughs> Education for Innovation Initiative. Thank you, President Obama. The next accomplishment that I'd like to talk about is on job creation. Did you know that on February 17, 2009, Congress passed the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act? In the three months before this act, the nation lost 2.2 million jobs. One year after the passage of the act, approximately 2, job, 2 million jobs had been created or saved through the private sector, local and state governments, and nonprofits. According to the Department of Labor's Secretary Solis, over the last three months of 2009, more than 100,000 jobs were created every single month. This means 1.1 million jobs were created. Last year, in October, the unemployment rate was 10.1%. According to the latest data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, in, on January 2011, the unemployment rate is now 9%. The number of unemployed people have decreased by 600,000. Thank you, President Obama. The, the last accomplishment that I would like to talk about is on health care. A major accomplishment and impact on, Amer on the American people is the health care reform and the Affordable Care Act of 2010. No other president was able to accomplish this. The act was passed by Congress and signed into law by the President in March 2010. Why is this important to us as students? This new law will ban lifetime limits, drop your coverage when you need it most, provide longer coverage for us students on our parents' plan, prohibits discriminating children with pre-existing conditions. Before the reform, our country had had a big percentage of cancer patients who had been denied, oh, sorry, who had been refused treatment. Insurance companies could deny them by saying they had pre-existing conditions. Now, let me tell you a story about a woman named Gail. Gail had been fighting cancer and had been denied health care insurance because she was uninsured. When the health care law was passed, she was able to pay for her medical needs and overcome her battle with cancer. This new law saved her life. There are many Gails out there who are benefiting from the health care reform. For more information, refer to the 2010 health care reform. These are the facts. Thank you, President Obama. <laughs> now, my opinion. In my opinion, this reform act has already helped many people in America. This may not be a perfect health care bill, but it's certainly a great start and is continuously unfolding. Now I'd like to share with you my dream. My dream is to live in America that is not colorblind, but respects and embraces everyone's differences. To live in an America where we are not afraid to have honest discussions about race relations. To live in an America where African American, Latin American, and Native American, and Asian American cultures and history are all taught in American schools, valuing all American people. An America where $45,000 per year of taxpayers' money is not spent on housing a disproportionate number of black and brown prisoners, but educating students. 
Today, America only spends about $5,000 per year per student, and we steady cutting the education bill, uh, the education budget. My dream is to live in an America that an African American president is not feared but supported. In America, where a senator would not find a level of comfort stating that his number one goal is to make our president a, a one-term president. Rather than the one goal is to make, oh, rather than the number one goal being to work to fix America's problem during the crisis period is this. This was what Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell said about our president. My dream is to live in an America that is not trying to take back their country from their citizens. Because all citizens are valued. An inclusive America that operates with a moral and spiritual consciousness. We are not necessarily the religious consciousness, but the spiritual consciousness. Where we are all treated equally, regardless of race, creed, color, spiritual religious beliefs, gender, and gender identity. God bless you all, and God bless America. Thank you for having me.